back again for potentially the last year in North America is the Ford Transit Connect. Now the one in behind me is the cargo van, but we still do have the passenger van available there as an option. Now, I did say that it's potentially the last year. Few reasons why. The Transit Connect, it looks like, is getting discontinued in North America. But having said that, there were also talks that the next generation would be built on the same platform as the Escape, the Maverick, and the Bronco Sport. So as of right now, it hasn't officially been announced, but it does look like this might be the last production year in North America. But having said that, apparently this thing still will be available for the European market after 2023. And that's going to be under the Turnio, so what this thing is known as in the European market. Now, there aren't any changes from the 22 to the 23 model. So we are still looking at either the cargo van or the passenger van. In the cargo van, it's going to be either the short or the long wheelbase, depending on if you're in Canada or in the US. Because in Canada, we're strictly looking at the long wheelbase as an option, but you do have that shorty if you're down in the States. But the Transit Connect van, it's nice, it's nimble. If you wanna use it as like a micro camper van, you can do that. You wanna do some basic upfitting inside for your electrical business, it's got that flexibility. And these things are great delivery vans too. I'm actually kinda of sad that this thing might get discontinued. Let's look at some basics of this vehicle because it still is fairly sharp. Underneath the hood of the Transit Connect, we do have this, the regular two liter. It's super straightforward and very easy to access everything. So we can top up all of our fluids, check change our oil, easy access to the battery on top of that. So it is very straightforward. Power wise, this thing doesn't really have much to write home about. It's a pretty small engine and it's non turbocharged at the same time. But with it being non turbo so naturally aspirated, that's just like one less thing we have to worry about from a maintenance perspective. But just make sure you're regularly maintaining your vehicle, so regularly scheduled maintenance, and then just make sure you take it in for regular oil changes as needed. But other than that, this thing is nice and simple. We have our traditional headlamps there with fogs down below. Now, when we get into the XLT, that's when we've got the fogs because the regular XL van, unfortunately, doesn't have the fog as an option. One other nicety when you get into the XLT, we've got the option for the forward sensing system. Now, this one doesn't have the forward sensors. It does at least have the reverse sensing system, but it is nice to know that you could get those front sensors if you want them. We've got just our regular Ford blue oval right in the middle there, so in our grill. But outside of that, front end is straightforward. Looking at the drivetrain for the Transit Connect, it's strictly going to be available front wheel drive. And you're only looking at 16 inch wheels as an option. So it doesn't matter if you're in the XL or XLT, strictly looking at the 16 inch. Now trying to get your hands on one of these things is also slightly tricky right now. Check with your selling dealer, Formula Ford here in Pickering, great dealership to work with, and I know they do have a few more incoming. You could technically also put through a factory order right now, the order bank still is open. So if you do want one of these things, you wanna use it as a micro van for camping, or if you have some upfitting needs for your business, you wanna check with Formula Ford to see if they can help you out putting through an order on one of these. So just for like a little point of comparison here, I'm six feet tall, and like I still have headspace over and above. So this thing is not a big van by any stretch of the imagination. So if you are, like I said, looking for something bigger, you could always go for the full-size transit instead, whether that's the low, medium, or high roof. But this thing, nice, nimble, it's pretty small at the same time. Looking at the first row of the Transit Connect van, this thing is straightforward. And like I said, this is going to be the Transit Connect XLT. So we've got a few other things default that are not going to be standard inside of the XL version of the vehicle. But like really when you play with the numbers, it just makes more sense to go for the XLT instead because of some of the extras that you get. But let's go over some highlights. So along the door, straightforward, our unlock lock buttons. We've got controls for our windows as well as our side view mirrors. Now, one little thing about the side view mirrors is that we've got our main glass and then there's like this tiny little like convex mirror at the top of it. And that's something that we would have to manually adjust. Just by the left knee, we've got a series of other buttons that are available. So we've got one for our fog lamps, figure out what's going on with our running lamps. And then we've got another one to control the brightness of the cluster screen as well as the multimedia screen. 
So starting off looking along the very top left there, so as you can see, we can figure out what's going on with our cluster screen. So we can go up and down between a few different options. We've got our basic for our My View. This one is going to let us go between different submenus. So we've got our digital speedometer, eco coach, things like that. But as we go up and down, we're actually going between different options there, and each one has a different subsection. So we go to our audio, we can change between AM, FM, Sirius XM. If our phone is connected, we could also have that as an option there also. Moving down a little bit more, we've got our phone. We've got our setting screen as well as our trip counter. Moving inside, we've got our trip one, two. We can reset if we wanted to. And we can simply press the OK button in the middle in order to be able to reset all values. So we can easily press that if we wanted to. Moving down, one of the big ones to point out are gonna be our driver assistance settings. So we've got our blind spot system. That lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Pre-collision assist, active braking. So if the vehicle senses a collision, it's automatically going to brake for us. We've got our lane keeping system. So that's where we've got the alert, the aid, or the alert and the aid. And down a bit more, we've got our driver alert. So if we get too many notifications, it's going to let us know we should probably take a break. Down a bit more, we've got our cross traffic alert. So if we're backing up and the vehicle senses a vehicle behind us, it's going to beep at us, letting us know of a potential collision. Back again, that is going to be the basics of that setting. And then going in through, as you can see, through navigation, we've got my previous destinations, favorite, point of interest icons, things like that. Now, one thing to note, if yours didn't have the factory navigation, we wouldn't have that submenu option there instead. It would literally just be the compass showing up. And that's going to be the basics of the actual instrument cluster screen, so very straightforward. Off to the right-hand side, we can change between songs or radio stations, answer or hang up on a phone call. And then we can also increase or decrease the volume if we'd like to all on the bottom left side, so we will have at least our regular cruise control inside of this as well. So it is nice to know that if we go, if we are a fan of cruise, we can have that one going if we'd like to. Looking on our left stick, we've got a button on the very tip of the stick there. So we can push that button in order to be able to turn that lane keeping system on or off. So that's one nice thing is that we can turn it on or off if we want to. We know it's on when we see that little steering wheel, so we see those lanes right in the middle there. And then the stick on the right, so we do have the flexibility to be able to control what's going on with our front and our rear wiper. We can turn our rear wiper on because there's a little button right on the tip of that stick there. So we can turn that one, turn our rear wiper on simply by pressing that one up or down. And then the steering wheel inside of this thing is going to be a manual telescoping. So between our legs there, we've got a little release, and then we're just going to adjust it as necessary, click it in order to lock it back into place. Now one thing, we are going to be just a traditional key inside of the Transit Connect, so we don't have the option for push button start inside of this thing. But shooting over, we do have our basic vent controls. Right now, this is going to be the Sync 3 media screen that's going to be standard in the XLT and the titanium trim levels of the vehicle. So a few things to point out about the screen. Firstly, this specific one does have factory navigation. But if yours doesn't have factory nav, don't worry about it because we do have the flexibility of connecting through either Android or iPhone devices to be able to use Apple Maps, Google Maps, and Waze directly through this middle screen. But if yours didn't have factory nav, yours just wouldn't have the map there. Instead, we would have our audio there, a little compass, and then still the ability to add our phone along the bottom. So we've got our basic audio tab there. So as you can see, we've got our different sources. We can easily change sources that way if we'd like to. So we can go AM, FM, Sirius XM. If we had a USB stick with MP3s, we could also play that as well. And we've also got a little bit more flexibility. So we can tune this way if we want to. We can do a direct tune this way. So we can literally just type in the station there. Or if our vehicle supports it, we can press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel in order to be able to change the radio stations that way instead. So we've got some flexibility there. In order to be able to save a preset, we're literally just gonna tune, press and hold. And as you can see, Preset is now saved into the vehicle. So it really is that simple. One thing to note, when we're in, actually let's go to settings for a second because we go to our radio settings. As you can see, we've got a few options there. If we go into our preset pages, I always recommend going to the max pages, which is going to be six. There we go. So as you can see, we jump back into our audio screen for a second there, and now we've got up to 30 individual presets that are a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM. Now, one other thing to note, if we go into our sources again, if we change it to Sirius XM and then jump into our settings, this is now a Sirius XM button. So we've got some flexibility. We've got our parental lock. We've got our game notifications. We can tune to start. We can lock out certain channels. We can skip out different channels as well. So if you've got channels that you don't like, you can literally skip them out if you wanted to. Now, connecting a phone to the vehicle is a very straightforward process. So so literally what we're going to do on our actual device there, so we're just going to press add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. All right. And then on our phone, all we're going to do is just jump into Wi-Fi or jump into our Bluetooth and we're going to press the Bluetooth button. And we're literally just going to wait for for Transit Connect to pop up. We're going to press it. Okay. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. We need to make sure that the pin numbers match up, which they do. So we're going to hit yes and pair. 
Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync? Yes. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Perfect, nice and simple. Now, a couple things popped up there. We've got our 911 assist. Always recommend turning that one on. Big reason why is because if the vehicle senses a collision and your phone's connected, it's automatically gonna dial 911 for us. And then automatic contact download. Yeah, we're connecting to our phone for a reason. So let's hit okay there and we are connected, perfect. Now we've got to cover up a couple options there. We've got my recent call list, my contacts, my phone. We've got the keypad and a few other things. So we can literally dial things out directly through the screen if we wanted to. Now, if we go back to the home screen for a second, so we go back home, as you can see, my phone's connected. We can see my signal strength. We can see the battery life, and we can also see a few other things. Jumping back, if we want to, we can remove a phone easily by going to our settings. We go to phone, and as you can see, we can view devices. <laughs> we can manage contacts, set ringtone, and a few other things. So we go view devices if we've got multiple devices, that's where these things would show up. But we do have the flexibility of being able to set up Apple CarPlay inside of this thing as well, and very straightforward to do it. Literally, all we're gonna do is take our USB cable, and we're gonna plug it into that top USB port. We're gonna take the opposite end of the cable, plug it into our phone, and watch this. Okay, Apple CarPlay. So we do have to hit continue and we do need to agree in order for it to work. And we're gonna give it a second there. Do we want to allow Sync 3 while, yeah, CarPlay while it's locked? Absolutely. And boom, there you go. As you can see, we are now connected. So we've got my Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, and we've got Waze. So if yours doesn't have factory navigation, we still do have the flexibility of using all of our different app map applications, which is a nice thing. We've got my messages, podcasts, audiobooks, and a number of other things. Now, one nice thing about the Apple CarPlay side of things is that if we go into our general settings, we scroll down to CarPlay, we've got our Sync 3 system, we can customize the launcher as well. So if you have a tendency to listen to your podcast more and your audiobooks, we can go up and down. And when we do that, it literally does update it on the fly. So if you wanted calendar up at the top there, it's updating it dynamically. We can remove that if we wanted to very simply by just hitting remove. And we can shuffle these things around a bit more. If you've done too much to it, you can literally just do a factory reset in order to bring Sync 3 back to its default screen instead, clicking back into that main screen. And one of the cool things is that when we are connected through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, we still can use our factor, we can still use our volume rocker as well. So we can use AM, FM, Sirius XM while we're connected this way, which is nice. We don't necessarily have to rely on our podcast now playing, things like that. Now, in order to get back to the sync home screen, we're literally just going to press the forward button there and that's launched us back in. We can button press in order to get back into CarPlay or if we go into Apple CarPlay, we've got Apple CarPlay and Steve's iPhone. So we've got my phone there, so we can remove it if we wanted to. So if we remove the phone, watch this. So it's back to factory navigation instead. We can disable CarPlay as well. So my phone is technically still charging, but I'm not relying on using Apple CarPlay anymore. We can literally remove it from CarPlay if we wanted to, and there's no connected devices for CarPlay anymore. Actually, we jump back into our phone on the bottom there. I'm still connected over Bluetooth. So we've got my call, contacts list, and things like that. And it really is that simple. Now, if we have multiple devices, we could literally just hit change phone. But let's actually go through and set up an Android device right now as well, because it literally is the same process. So we're just going to hit add Bluetooth device. Select your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. And literally all we're waiting for is for the Transit Connect to show up on this as well. There we go. So we've got the Transit Connect. So we're just going to connect there. Connect to the Transit Connect. Mwahaha, why not? Confirm that the pin displayed on matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, match up. So we're going to hit yes and OK. For your safety, Perfect. please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so we're connected. So we're just going to hit allow to allow the messages there as well. And uh, one thing, because I've already got a phone connected, it's now given me this option. Do I want to save it as the favorite? Yes or no? Download contacts? Yes, we want to do that as well. So we are now connected to the Android device as well. So we click in. As you can see, we've got my phone assistant. We've got the Galaxy S9. So it really is that simple to be able to set this thing up. We jump into our phone there. We can go into our different phones, view devices. And as you can see, we've got my iPhone set as the current device. And we can either disconnect this, we can make it favorite, or we can remove it as well. So very straightforward there. But we do also have the option of using Android Auto if we want to. So very similar to the Apple side, we're just gonna take our USB cable, plug it into that available USB, USB device, opposite end of the cable, plug ourselves into the phone, and watch this. Okay, Android Auto. So on the phone, we would just have to hit next and we have to continue. And we just have to make sure that we agree there. 
Okay, and three, two, and I think we're connected. Are we connected? Yes, we are fully connected there. So as you can see, fully connected, we can jump into some basic settings there as well. So we've got some flexibility, hit the button at the very bottom, brings us into our basic summary list. We've got our notification center as well as our Google Assistant. So that's really nice is that we've got a little bit of flexibility when it comes down to the actual screen itself. Now, very similar to the iPhone side of things, we do have the flexibility to move some things around. So in our settings screen, we're just gonna go to Android Auto. We're just gonna go to our basic settings there. We've got my car that's connected. We can, we've got our Google detection. We can customize the launcher there as well. So if you have a tendency, oh, I don't know, maybe you want your news at the very top, you want your weather up there as well, we can kind of adjust things in, as we would like to. But one thing to note is that it's not dynamic the same way it is on the iPhone side. So we do have to actually stop Android Auto and relaunch it in order for those changes to take into effect. Moving back though, we've got our Google Assistant, we can turn weather on or off, and we've got a few other features there as well. But we can jump back to the home screen by pressing that forward button there. And as you can see, we can jump across, we can hop button press to get back into Android Auto. On the very bottom, clicking on the top there is going to launch us into our Android Auto settings. So we can, we've got our Android Auto, we can show connection, and we can remove the Galaxy as well. So if we remove my phone, remove, Android Auto should disappear. Perfect, there we go. And we're gonna disable Android Auto as well. We're gonna remove the device from the vehicle and it's now fully disconnected. So really is that simple to be able to adjust phones from there. And then in order to be able to remove phones from the vehicle, we're gonna to go to view devices and we've got the few devices there. So we can click on either one. We can remove, remove. And then we go to the Galaxy, same idea. We can disconnect or we can completely remove it from the vehicle as well. And the phone is now fully disconnected and it really is that simple. Now, jumping into our navigation settings. So we've got quite a few options there. We've got our 3D model, breadcrumbs, point of interest icons, and a few other things. Breadcrumbs is a neat one because as we go through the actual map, and let's kind of zoom out there. So as we go through different areas, it's literally going to leave little dots and let us know where we've gone. So think of Hansel and Gretel, it's kind of neat setting there. Jumping back into our nav settings, we've got some different options for route preferences. So fastest, shortest, most eco-friendly. We can avoid freeways, toll roads, and things like that. We've also got some other nav preferences. So the navigation preferences are gonna be specifically for the voice command prompts and the guidance prompts. So we can have a voice and tone, just a voice or a tone only. So you've got some flexibility there. And moving back again, so as you can see, we've got a few other options. So we can view our route, we can detour, we've got our search history and a few other things. We've got our home and work addresses, point of interest icons, and our history as well. So we've got some few different, we've got quite a few different options when it comes down to it. Moving back in, we can click on the top right there in order to be able to cancel the route as well. And moving into our settings, we've got quite a few different options. So we've got some basic for our sound settings, so treble, mid-range, bass, balance, fade, things like that. Looking at some general settings, we've got quite a few options there. So we can go between English, Spanish, French, Celsius, Fahrenheit, kilometers and miles. We can disable the beep that we get as we go between screens. And we can also do a reset. So either master reset or just the Ford Pass reset as well. So a few options there. Moving down to the side, we've got 911 assist, automatic updates, which I always recommend, make sure you connect to your Wi-Fi network at home, turn on automatic updates as well, because if the vehicle knows that there's an update available, it's automatically gonna update it for us. Ford Pass Connect, the vehicle does have the option for a wireless hotspot for up to 10 devices. We do need a data only plan through our cell phone provider in order to be able to have that to work well, but we do have that flexibility if we wanna set that up. We've got Apple CarPlay, which we are going to remove CarPlay. So let's remove the CarPlay device. Okay, and Apple CarPlay is now gone. And that's one of the nice things because if we disable Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, the buttons will literally disappear. But when we plug a phone back in, they'll come right back to us again. So we've got a rear occupant alert, which if we turn the vehicle off, it's going to give us a message letting us know to check the back seat. We've got our camera settings there as well. Now display, we've got a few options. So this is technically the daytime mode because we've got auto, daytime, nighttime, etc. We can lock it into one of the other modes or we can let the vehicle determine if it's going to be in the day or the nighttime mode. And that's gonna be dependent on how bright it is outside. And as nice as the screen is, if we find it's a little bit too much, we can turn the, we can go to a calming screen instead. We can bring it back to life. We can hop inside, go back to our display and turn the display off as well. So we've got some flexibility when it comes down to it. We can change around the brightness and we've got a few other options there. Moving into our voice control. So voice control, we've got a few different options. Advanced mode means we won't get as many notifications as we do certain things. So I want you to listen to something for a second. 97.7. Okay, so what's happened is it's changed radio stations for us, but it hasn't actually told us that it's doing it. So the advanced mode, like I said, we just won't get as many notifications. Phone confirmation, do you want to call such and such person? Yes or no. And then our command list. So when we press the voice command prompt in the steering wheel, this is the command list that's going to show up. 
Moving back, we've got our valet mode, and that's what that's going to do is give us the option of entering in a four-digit number in order to be able to lock the screen out. So if you've got a valet driver, you want just basic security, we've got that flexibility. Shooting over, we do have some basic controls for our audio, tuning rocker. If you have a phone that supports wireless charging, we've got a wireless charge pad inside of the XLT. Down from there, we've got our basic vent controls and a series of different climate control settings. We are just going to be regular, so single zone climate control inside of this. Moving down a bit more, let's uh, toss you into a drive there. We've got a series of other buttons, so an eco button, and that's going to put us into economy mode, essentially. We can turn our traction control system on or off, and then we've got our start-stop button. And the start-stop is the one that's potentially going to kill power to the engine if we come to a complete stop. It's nice that's available there as an option, but if it drives you crazy, you could technically disable it. You have to disable it every time the vehicle starts up again now, so... But from here, we've got just a regular shifter, which is great. We've got our park reverse neutral drive, and we can drop it into a manual mode because we've got little buttons on the inside of the shifter. So next to where our body is on the driver's side, plus minus buttons there, which is kind of cool. Moving down, we've got a few power points, like I was mentioning. So a USB, USB-C, traditional 12 volt power point. We've got a few cup holders, little storage tray, manual parking brake. And then there's also a little armrest there with a decent amount of storage for the size of it. And it's just storage, so we don't have any sort of USB power points or any other power points in there at all. Now, as we shift up overhead, we don't have any sort of rear view mirror in this thing because we wouldn't be able to see it because there's no windows in the back. And that's obviously because this is the cargo version of the vehicle. But if you were in the passenger version, you would, but it's just not going to be here because we're in the cargo. So from there, we've got a series of buttons in order to control what's going on with our lights. We don't have any sort of sunglasses holder here, but we do have a giant visor with a vanity mirror that's built in, a little business card holder, and this thing extends out. Oh my god, so far. So far. It's, it's a little flimsy when it goes out all the way, but it is nice to know Ugh, that's available there as an option. Now over and above that, we do have this nice storage tray right overhead as well, which is kind of nice. Maps, storage, junk, whatever the case may be, it is there. But this is straightforward. Now the seats inside of this thing, they're actually not bad. So it's, it's a fairly comfortable seat, and this is just like a regular cloth seat. We do have a few different ways that we can adjust it. So with the seat as far down as it'll go... Oh, it's still so like even without it down like I've got like what's like a foot plus of headspace there so the way that I would typically drive it myself even still like so so much headspace which is great but we've got a series of different switches along our left side so all manual adjust inside of the XL XLT so we can go up down with it we've got one a bit further back to adjust our backrest and then if we want to adjust what's going on with our seat, so how close we are, we've got a little lever in between our legs. So just sliding back and forth there. And that's the same for the driver passenger side. And then we've also got this little guy on the outside of the, or technically inside of the seats in the middle. And that's going to be for our manual lumbar support. So we could adjust that if we want to on the driver's side. And that's just going to be for the driver's side. But as I said, basic features styling wise inside of this, it's basic, it's simple. It's a cargo van, it gets you from A to B. Like I said, the upfitting potential is where this is at. So I'm hoping that Ford ends up bringing this thing onto the C2 platform, which is the same as the Escape, the Maverick, and the Hybrid. I'm like, oh, fingers crossed, that'd be cool. So you could get an all-wheel drive version of this on top of that, but it's gonna depend on how much demand they have for it. But this is the cargo version of the vehicle. Let's hop back there and see what's going on space-wise. Towards the back end of the Transit Connect, Pretty straightforward. We've got our Transit Connect badge along the left side, XLT badge along the right side. Obviously gonna be different if you're in the XL. And then we've got our Ford logo along the bottom right. Now from there, we've got our backup camera. It's a North American safety standard. You're always gonna get that. Now this one does have the optional reverse sensing system that you're gonna find inside of the Transit Connect. You do have an option for a package where you can get the forward and the reverse sensing system. So it's gonna depend on what you want out of it. Forward sensing system is nice because if you're gonna constantly be parking this thing, you can see exactly what's going on in the front and rear as you go. But matter of preference there. This one clearly doesn't have any sort of hitch from the factory. But if we are looking at towing, we're gonna max out at 2000 pounds. 
Payload for this thing is pretty respectable for a vehicle this size. This one as configured, I believe is 1,637 pounds, give or take. So it is nice we've got that as an option, but if you're looking for something a little bit more robust for towing and for payload, you could look at just the regular size transit instead. So we could look at that low roof, regular length transit, full size. Getting inside of this thing is straightforward. So we've got our dual doors here. And the dual cargo doors are fairly useful. One other cool thing about them is we've got little buttons that we can push if we wanna swing these things open. So it is very useful if you're gonna be loading in different types of cargo and things like that. But when we look at the transit van in general, we've got a few different ways we can configure this thing. So we've got our dual cargo doors. There's also an option for a lift gate. This specific one also does have dual sliding doors. So one on the driver and the passenger side. So you do have a few different options when we look at configurations of this vehicle. And I always say it, it's gonna depend on what you personally need. Some basics back here, nothing off to the left. Off to the right, we only have a little 12 volt power point. Another thing to highlight is we do have this little guy right here, and that's gonna be to release our spare tire that's located just underneath the vehicle. But nice and simple, very straightforward, but you gotta take a look at the size of this thing. So taking a peek at the cargo measurements for this thing, it does have a pretty decent size to it. Now, having said that, it's technically not going to be big enough if you want to throw in sheets of plywood. So it's just not quite long enough. We would have to look at the full size transit if we wanted to go that route. But like I said, we can go for that low roof regular length if we wanted to go that route. So if you do want to walk through the full size transit, check down in the description of the video. But like I said, I'm six feet tall. So if your plan is to make this thing into a camper van, you can totally do it. I still have like six plus inches of headspace there on top of that. So, I mean, if you wanted to create like a little camper van, you've got that flexibility. We do have our finished flooring down here, some finished elements along the side on top of that. And then we've got six little tie down hooks. So nice and simple. We've got some lights strategically placed on the inside of the vehicle here on top of that. Another thing to point out, headspace. So like I said, I'm six feet tall and <laughs> <laughs> it's like a like a little bit tight here yeah yeah like there's zero chance that like on my knees i'm not getting all the way up i'm like uh. <laughs> so just go in knowing <sighs> head space not too crazy but i mean at the same time if you're just laying down because you've got a little bed back there more than enough space for what you might need filling up fuel inside of the transit connect is very straightforward so just along our passenger side, we've got an unlocked system and it's capless at the same time. So just insert, fill up, and you're good to go. Minimum manufacturer's recommendation for the Transit Connect, just regular 87 gas. So regular fuel is all you need to use inside of this thing. If you wanted to run something like an 89 or a 91, you could, it's just not necessary. And that was a look at the 2023 Ford Transit Connect cargo van. What'd you think? Nice and simple, but if you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. More than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. But if you found this one useful, give it a thumbs up, share it with someone if you think it might help them. And until I see you next time, take care. But we still do have the passion. What this thing is known. If you had factory navigation, that would show up as an option here. Very straightforward, just along our driver's side. That's the passenger side. <laughs>